Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader, the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. We're a global movement, but we're located, based, headquartered here in South Florida. We have a church here in South Florida, one in Birmingham, one in California, houses of prayer and prayer hubs all over the world. But we're here. I'm here in South Florida. If you're here in South Florida, I want to see you. I want to meet you. I want to minister to you. Come on over to Awakening House of Prayer in Davie, Florida, Fort Lauderdale. 1047 a.m. Sundays, 1.30 p.m. Sundays, two different messages, two different worship teams. Somebody say it, two different encounters. Amen. God is good. We had a great time yesterday in the midst of a massive tropical storm and the Saints came out to be in the presence of God. Amen. Come on out. Monday night, corporate prayer. Friday night, corporate prayer. Prophecy rooms, healing rooms, and pretty soon, deliverance rooms. Yes, I said it. Deliverance rooms. I'm in South Florida. Where are you? Come on over. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awakeningprayerhubs.com. You know it. Join the movement. Why do I talk about this every day? Because I'm passionate about it. Here's what I know. If you're passionate about something, you'll talk about it. If you've got a vision for something, you'll keep casting it. Amen. Awakening Probs is a movement of prayer warriors who are being transformed into prayer leaders, leading, mobilizing intercessors in their city, raising them up, praying together and seeing transformation. That is the vision, transforming revival in Jesus name. If you want to be part of that, you can find a hub or you can launch a hub at awakeningprayerhubs.com. Whatever you do. Pray about it. Jump in if God says yes. Do it before the devil talks you out of it. Awakeningprayerhubs.com. Join the movement. Where's all my prophetic people at? Where's all my Ignite Network members at? Ignitenow.org. We are a prophetic family. I say family. It's called the Ignite Network. But it's really, we've become a family. And I want to invite you into my family. You have a VIP invitation Will you RSVP to my VIP invitation, ignitenow.org. Come learn with us. Come grow with us. Come share what God is showing you. Fit in. Find a place where you fit in. You know why some places you don't fit in? Some places where you go, you don't fit in because you don't fit in. But we welcome you. Even if we don't understand you, we love you. Amen. God is good. Ignitenow.org. Join that prophetic family. Amen. Now, today's devotion, which is music to my ears, is... Titled, Repentance Will Bring Victory. My, 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 my. Repentance will bring victory. Wait, what? Repentance will bring victory. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Repentance is part of your warfare. Don't enter the raging war without repenting of your sins and asking me to forgive you of all unrighteousness says the Spirit of God. Don't go into battle with unforgiveness in your heart. Don't release your war cry until you release the cry of repentance. Don't take the, let, don't let the devil take advantage over you by neglecting to allow me to wash you with the water of my word and cleanse you with the blood of the lamb. Check your heart before you rush in with spiritual guns blazing. Now, if that's not a word for right this moment in history, I don't know what is. Selah. Check your heart before you rush in with guns blazing. Isaiah 30, 15, Jeremiah 31, 9, Hosea 4, 12 are the scripture references for today. Now the prayer starter and the decree, Father, I repent. Come on, do this with me. Father, I repent for being undone by the enemy's attacks. I repent for any area of disobedience that opened the door for the wicked one to harass me or thwart your plans in the earth. I decree repentance is my warfare and releases me from the enemy's snare. I declare my spiritual guns blaze against the dark forces working to tempt me in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Father, we give you praise. We honor you, God. We honor you, the one true living God, the God who gives us the gift of repentance. We honor you. We magnify you over our bad attitudes. We magnify you over our biases. We magnify you over our self-pity. We magnify you over our anger. We magnify you, Jesus, over our disappointment. We magnify you, God, over our discouragement. 
We magnify you because you are still on the throne. You are high and lifted up. No matter what has happened, no matter what is happening, no matter what will happen, you are still our God. You reign. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. No one has displaced you from your throne. Nothing, no one can ever displace you from your throne. You are our only good. You are the immutable God. The God we can always turn to, who will always be there. You've not been unseated. You've not been shifted from authority and sovereignty over the affairs of man. You are still good. You're a great God. You're a magnificent God. You're a holy God. You're an all-powerful God. You're a God who sees all things and works all things together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Those who love you, those who love you, that means us. We love you. We thank you, God, that you're working all things together for the good. But we've got to repent. We've got to be a people who are willing to let go of being right so that we can walk in righteousness. Many years ago, the Lord said to me, because I always wanted to be right. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? But I had this tension, this strong drive. I just had to be right. I had to have the last word. Thank God he's delivered me from that. But the Lord told me many years ago, listen to me. It's not about being right. It's about being righteous. And many times things happen in our lives and in our nations, the way that we're seeing right now. And everybody thinks they're right and they're stops they're right except we're not acting and behaving in a manner that glorifies God. Many times we are self-righteous instead of God-righteous. So, Father, we repent if we have been so adamant about being right that we have compromised our righteousness in the sense of our behavior that doesn't glorify you, the words of our mouth that grieve your spirit. We repent, God, if we have been so staunch in our views and our opinions and our viewpoints and our belief system that we somehow decided that other people's views and belief systems should be attacked, that other people should be cut down, that other people should be rebuked because we're so right. Help us, Lord, in our nation, in our jobs, in our marriages, in our families, not to hold on so tight to being right that we actually bring your spirit and lose the authority of your spirit and bringing change that we want to see in our situations. Father, we repent for trusting in anything or anyone besides you. Jeremiah said in the, in the Bible, it says, Jeremiah says, Blessed, cursed is the, is, is the man who leans on the arm of flesh. My God. Cursed is the man who leans on the arm of flesh. And so many times, God, we put our faith in our spouses, or we put our faith in our employer, or we put our faith in, in, in something or someone other than you. And we don't want to do that anymore. We want to put our faith solely on you. And yeah, you bring people in our lives so we can trust. That's that's a wonderful thing. We're so grateful for those you've surrounded us with that we can trust. But God, help us not put more trust in the intercessors than we put in the intercessor, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, not to put more faith in our friends or trust in our friends than we put in the friend who sticks closer than a brother, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, not to put more faith, more trust in our pastor, our shepherd, than we put in the shepherd, Jesus Christ. He is the one who we can always trust and who never fails. Father, help us, Lord, to get our priorities right in this season, to get our mouths right in this season. Help us, Lord, not to put so much trust in our own ability that you actually resist us. <laughs> God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And sometimes we just think we, we can do it. We can do it ourselves. 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 And apart from you, the reality is that we can't do anything. So, Father, we repent today for putting our trust and our faith in a prime minister, in a president, in a king. More faith, more trust in a prime minister, a president, or a king than we put in the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, our destiny is in your hands. <laughs> Let's bring it down closer. Our day is in your hands. Our times are in your hands, Lord, and you are a good, good father. If we can walk in that spirit of repentance, 
that lifestyle of repentance, being quick to repent. Help us to do that, Lord. Because you know we're going to blow it. You know we're going to get angry. You know we're going to say dumb stuff. You know we're going to enter strife that we shouldn't be entering into. You know we're going to do these things. You know everything we're going to do before we do them. But God, give us that grace of repentance. Let that just wash over us, that grace of repentance, where we are quick to repent, where we are quick to recognize the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Because we're talking about going into warfare. We have no authority in warfare where we're not sternly, strictly standing on the word of God. When we're standing on our opinion, we can't war with our opinion, God, but you teach us that this morning. Let that truth just sink into our hearts. We cannot go to war with an opinion. We cannot go to war with a bias. We cannot go to war with with a fleshly anger and expect to win. We cannot go to war with a a sword that is dulled by strife. The Bible says that where there's strife, there's evil, there's confusion in every evil work. So forgive us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us for trying to fight in our own strength, for trying to fight against your will. Sometimes we fight against God's will. God, would you forgive us when we don't recognize your will for our lives, for our families, when we don't recognize sometimes your will, even for our cities, our nations, our children. We think we know what's best for our children, but God, would you help us to Really know what your will is for our children so that we don't stand in the way and become a stumbling block for the people that we love. Help us, Lord. We want to go to war with a clean slate. We cannot go to war and war against the devil's plans for our our lives, our jobs, our homes, our finances, our cities, our nations. We cannot go into battle when we have common ground with the enemy and expect to win. So God, we are crying out for your mercy. We are crying out for your mercy. We are crying out for the grace of repentance. We are crying out because we need to go into this fight, whatever fight you're facing today, people. Whatever fight that is staring you down, beloveds. Whatever fight that's threatening to steal, kill, or destroy something from you, my friends, we've got to go into that battle clean in the spirit. So Father, help us to cast down our idols, whether that idol is money, whether that idol is a job, whether that idol is a person, whether that idol is a government official. Help us, Lord, to let go of the idolatry. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Cleanse us from unrighteousness, God. Your word says if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We receive your cleansing. Now just take a moment to receive it. It gives you confidence. Listen. Many times we ask God to forgive us, but we don't take a moment just to receive that acknowledge it so where it gets deep down inside of us so that when we go to the battle line we're confident the enemy tries to bring those condemning thoughts and throw up in our face what we did wrong and we're going to have confidence that it's under the blood because we took the time to receive the forgiveness do you understand father we receive your forgiveness we receive your forgiveness for self-pity all the self emotions self-thoughts all those fears, all the doubts, the anger, we receive your forgiveness. Just let it wash over you. Just receive it. Just know it. He's casting our sins as far as the east is from the west. Lord, we receive forgiveness for the strife in the body of Christ and the part that we played in it. We receive your forgiveness for judging a brother or sister based on the way they look, the way they speak, or the way they vote. We receive your forgiveness, God, for persecuting Christ and another person. (laughs) 
Do you realize when we persecute each other as Christians, we're really persecuting Jesus? Remember Saul on the road to Damascus? And a bright light shone and knocked him off of his horse, and he was blinded by the light, and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecute me? He said, who is it, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus Christ, the one you're persecuting. When we persecute each other, do you have any idea how it grieves the Holy Spirit? And we're really persecuting Christ because he's taking it very personally. Well, that'll rock your theology. Amen. If we're created in the image of Christ and we're in Christ and I'm persecuting you, then Jesus is involved. I'll say this. When we're persecuted for righteousness sake. God's not, God's not looking for us to tear each other apart. We're supposed to be building each other up. The Bible says don't bite and devour each other lest you be consumed by one another. The Bible says the house divided against itself cannot stand. And in this hour, I've never seen so much vitriol in the body of Christ. So, Father, we receive your forgiveness for that. Even if we have not been partakers in it, we cry out for the grace of repentance to wash over the body of Christ. And we stand in agreement with your plans and purposes for each one of our lives, for each one of our nations, for each one of our families. We receive forgiveness. We receive your forgiveness. We receive your forgiveness. And God, we ask you for a spirit of unity to come amid our ranks. In our families, we ask you for that spirit of unity. On our job site, we ask you for that spirit of unity. In our churches, God, we ask you for unity to reign as Christ reigns. In our cities, God, in our nations, we ask you, Lord, for unity, for healing, because where there's unity, God commands a blessing. <laughs> where there's unity, God commands a blessing. What's the inference of that? Where there's strife, the enemy bring, comes in with cursed plans. God commands a blessing when we stay in unity. Unity doesn't mean we all have to believe the same thing. We have to have unity of spirit, even if we disagree in our souls with certain things each other stand for. We're supposed to strive for unity of spirit with the bond of peace. Unity in the spirit with the bond of peace. Paul said, inspired by the Holy Spirit, unity in the spirit with the bond of peace. So, Father, we repent for whatever part we play. And if we've not played a part, then we repent identificational repentance. We stand in the gap for those who refuse to repent, for trusting in someone or something other than you. We stand in the gap for those who are breeding strife in the body of Christ. We stand in the gap for those who are trying to divide the church over something that has a, <laughs> no eternal value, no eternal value. Something that won't matter 50 years from now. Help us, Lord, to keep everything in our lives in perspective from top to bottom. Help us, Lord, to keep our problems in perspective. Most of the things we worry about today aren't going to matter in a year. There's some things that are very serious, and I know that we all have real problems, but so many of the things that we fret about, so many of the things that we fight about, they're not going to have any significance in 50 years, certainly Probably not even in a year. Maybe some of the things we're worried about, we'll look back a week later and say, why did I worry? Why did I fight? Why did I argue? Why did I make that Facebook post? Why did I sow that seed? Father, we don't want this harvest of strife coming back in our lives. We don't want this harvest of infidelity coming back in our lives. We don't want this harvest of cursing the enemy wants to bring on our lives because we open a wide door by cursing others. We don't want that. We want your blessings, your maximum blessings. And so we repent and we receive your forgiveness this morning. We receive it because you're a beautiful God and you died so that we could have continual access to your throne, to come to your throne boldly, to find grace and obtain mercy to help in time of need. And God, we are in a time of need and we need a continual outpouring of grace and mercy right now with everything going on in the world. So much going on in the world. 
we can't control, but you're on the throne, God, and we trust in you. We surrender to you. We thank you, Lord. We can trust in you. We can trust in you. You are trustworthy. No matter what plague has come to our nations, no matter what political strife is manifesting, no matter what's going on with our prodigals, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter, no matter, God is still on the throne and we thank you that you've got our backs. You've got it all worked out. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I love this. Look, Isaiah 40, 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. The New Living Translation says he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Come on, isn't that good? When you feel weak, this is so good. When you feel weak, but you believe God, which even your faith is weak. You believe him, but your faith is getting hit. Your faith is getting bombarded. Your faith is getting knocked around by the devil, by the vain imaginations. If you'll just hold on, even if you've got a mustard seed amount of faith in the moment, he gives you power. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. The English standard says he gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. That means there's still hope for you. Even if you feel like your faith is hanging on by a thread, there's still hope for you because God is a God of hope and he's still watching over his word to perform it in your life. He gives power to the faint. So when that fainting spirit comes to try to do the TKO, God's like, "Uh uh-uh, I still see them in faith. You know, Paul perceived that a man had faith for healing and he said, get up. God perceives your faith. He knows when your faith is weak, but you've still got faith. Even if you've got weak faith, you've still got faith. He gives power to the faint and increases strength to the weak. Come on, isn't that good? That's what we're going to pray into today. Many of you are feeling weak. The, The Bible says he empowers the feeble and infuses the powerless with increasing strength. Come on, I like that. The Bible says in the Amplified Version, he gives power to the faint and weary. And to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it abound. Come on now. You might feel weak. You might feel like you can't go on another day. I don't know what you're facing in your life. I know I've been through some bad trials where I felt like I can't eat. Uh-uh, I'm going to stay in bed. Uh uh-uh. I'm not doing this anymore. God, you're going to have to do something because I'm not. But even the cry out to God saying, God, you're going to have to do something because I'm not. That's not the ideal prayer, but it shows that you still have faith in God. He gives power to the weak, to the faint and the weary. And to him, listen, to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. He energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to dropouts. So, Father, I thank you this morning that you are the source of our faith. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. (laughs) Your word tells us you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And so we thank you for that. We thank you that you can infuse us with strength and power. All we need is a little bit of faith, and you already gave us the measure of faith. So even though it feels like we have no faith sometimes, that measure of faith that God gave us is still in us. We got to find uh, the strength to dig deep, to pull that faith up to the surface. And guess what? He gives you the strength to dig deep and pull that faith up to the surface. He gives you strength to combat the spirit of doubt. He gives you strength to combat the spirit of unbelief. He gives you strength to stand and withstand in the evil day. He gives you strength when you feel like you can't take one more step. God, I thank you. Infuse us with power. Infuse us with strength. Infuse us with your glory. Infuse us, God. Help us. Strengthen us in this hour. This hour of uncertainty in the earth. Strengthen us, God. This hour where families are divided by opinion. Strengthen us, God. Strengthen us, God. Strengthen us, God. Strengthen us, God. Cause our strength to multiply and make it abound in Jesus' name. Strengthen us, God. Energize us, God. Increase our strength, God. 
We will not give up on what we're believing for. We will continue to contend with the promises of God, which are yes and amen. The great and precious promises that you spoke to our heart. We will continue contending in faith. We will fight the good fight of faith. We will keep pressing and pushing past the darkness until we see the light, the glorious light. We thank you, God. Strengthen every person on this broadcast. Strengthen everyone. Strengthen every one, God, inside and out. Strengthen them in their inner man, God. Strengthen them in their inner man, God. Strengthen them in their inner man, God. Strengthen us all in our inner man, God. That's an apostolic prayer from Paul. Strengthen us in our inner man, God. We need strength in our inner man, God. We don't need, we don't need, uh, that's the most important kind of strength we need. Is that kind of strength, strength of the inner man, spiritual strength will sustain us when our soul gets weary. Inner man strength, spiritual strength will sustain us when our mind is under attack. Inner man strength, spiritual strength will sustain us. It will cause us to rise up and press past everything that stands in the way between us and your will, between us and your promises, between us and your plans, between us and your purposes, between us and our destiny. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your strength, your supernatural power. The power that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of us. The power that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of us. That's our confession. The power that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of us. That's our confession. The spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of us. Come on. That's our confession. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Father, we thank you that you strengthen us inside and out. Bend our will towards your will. In every situation, every circumstance, bend our will towards your will. Father, we love you. We know that you love us. We exalt you. We lift up your name over our lives, over our cities, our families, our jobs, our nations. We say you reign. Jesus Christ rules and reigns forever. He is seated high above the circle of the earth. The nations rave, they laugh, they scorn, but God laughs at his enemies. So we laugh at our enemies. We stand in faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, isn't God good? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. I know some of you like to sow. JenniferLeClaire.org slash donate. Cash app is I dollar sign I am Jennifer LeClaire. Thank you, Julie. Text to give is text the word pray to 754-701-2161. PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Venmo is Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303 if you want to mail something. One way you can pray for me, you want to go to prayforjennifer.com if you want to be part of my intercessory prayer army. By the way, that group is not for you to share other ministries' videos, and it's just for prayer. God bless you. I'll see you later. Have a great day.